Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Um, today, I wanted to do one in a series of uh, presentations when I want to talk a little bit about taking a history when a patient has a specific complaint. Um, I'm going to do a few of these, and I'm going to start today with talking about uh, chest pain, a patient complaining of chest pain. Um, and taking a history for that patient. You know, uh, a lot of times by taking a good history, we can have good outcomes or great outcomes uh, for a patient, right? Because we can zero down and get into what's really going on with the patient and not necessarily uh, just focusing in on a complaint and just treating that complaint. We get differential diagnosis and things like that. So today what I want to talk about and the goal of this Monday Minutes is, is trying to show you how you can focus your history gathering um, based on that chief complaint and not necessarily giving you treatments or diagnostic tools and things like that but things that you can ask patients when you uh, encounter them in the field complaining of specific things and in this case we're going to talk about uh, chest pain. Now <clears throat> you know chest pain is a very very common call in EMS, right, we're constantly, constantly get reminded all the time that it can be, you know, uh, um, suspected to be cardiac in nature until we prove otherwise, right? Taking 12 leads, taking good history, taking, um, you know, their medication list, all that type of stuff, right? And this is really good advice for us because when you get a patient with chest pain, no matter how old they are, they could actually be having a genuine cardiac event. But keep in mind that chest pain is only one symptom of different disease processes, processes, right, and different diseases that might be going on with the patient. So obtaining a history that's relevant to the chest pain itself is, is appropriate, okay? So when you do this, it's essential to move that history taking process into areas that are going to go beyond just evaluating the chest pain itself. Okay, so by doing that, um, you can kind of get a better understanding of the nature of that complaint. Okay, so not to say that every thing we do and every chest pain cone we get, they're going to make a total 100% definitive diagnosis, right? We have a limited time with the patient. We have limited, uh, to, you know, diagnostic resources at our disposal, okay? But by doing uh, uh, an assessment like I'm talking about here and thinking about the overall process of a chest pain call, okay, this can help us, okay, when it comes to try to understand that nature of the complaint. Okay, and maybe help us make sort of a differential diagnosis. So a good history can assist us in, in delivering good care to the patient, fast care to the patient, and help us in our decision on where we're going to be taking the patient based upon their complaint, right? You don't want to take a patient that you believe is having a true MI to a, a facility that can do uh, catheterization. It's, that's not a non, that's a non-PCI uh, hospital, okay? So a thorough history that's appropriate for the patient can be can be beneficial to the hospital itself and to the doctor also so uh, I want to go ahead uh, actually today um, and I want to go over to um, a, a a page in one of the um, history taking uh, guides over at TurboMedic. I thought it would be a good idea to kind of just show the flow chart there rather than try to reproduce it here in a Monday Minute. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to transition real quick over to that and then this way we can kind of just sort of read along to what the flow chart is and it comes to history taking and a chest pain complaint. So let's go over there and take a look at that. Okay, so um, I'm going to move this around a little bit here, so it's going to kind of be a little free-flowing. It's not going to be like a usual Monday Minutes sort of slide deck uh, presentation here, So at least for this part. So uh, just so you know, it's going to kind of move around so we can kind of zoom in and focus on these different areas when it comes to history taking and a chest pain complaint. So you've got your patient with chest pain, right? Some of the general questions that you could ask, all right, and this is sort of meant to give you specific sort of flow charts to ask certain questions when it comes to a patient's certain complaint, right? We all know ABCs or CAB and head to toe and all that good stuff, right? But this is sort of, these Monday Minutes I'm doing here are sort of a way to kind of vector your question 
asking um, when you've got a patient with specific complaints. In this case, it's chest pain, right? So what are some of the general questions that we could ask, right? And you can ask things like, what's the location of the pain? Um, provocation, right? And, you know, what, what happened? What were they doing when the pain started? Okay, what's the quality of the pain? Is it sharp? Is it dull? Is it pressure? Okay, well, is it radiating anywhere? Does it go any place? To the left side, to the right side, to their back, to their stomach, to their jaw, right? Um, severity, how bad the pain is, okay? Now, usually we use that 1 to 10 um, scale, right? How, much, how bad is the pain? Scale of 1 to 10. You know, 10 being the worst pain you've ever had, okay? But again, like it says here, this can be a subjective sort of evaluation because some people may have a you know problem understanding what you mean. They might have a, a, you know, a certain uh, a pain tolerance, okay? So for one person, it might be a 5. For another person, it might be a 10, okay? And think about the time. When did the pain start and how long has the pain been going on? Ask me if the pain is constant. Does it come and go? Does anything make the pain better? Movement, positioning, breathing, uh, things like that, okay? And does anything make the pain worse? Again, does movement, does breathing, does activity, does uh, anything, you know, make the pain become worse, okay? And you should try to include asking them whether or not the pain is changing, okay, as well when they take a deep breath or they exhale, okay? Just some things that you can ask them to sort of try to vector your exam and, and help with your definitive your differential diagnosis, okay? Now, what about some associated questions, okay? Um, you can ask them, have they had any recent trauma, okay? Sometimes you forget to ask a question like this, and that could very well be why they're having um, chest pain, right? Ask them, you know, do they have shortness of breath with it, okay? Do they have, um, did the shortness of breath start before or after the chest pain? Have they been coughing up anything, especially if they're coughing up any blood? Do they have any nausea or any vomiting, okay? And think about their history, okay? Um, current history and history in the past, right? Have they had chest pain like this before? Um, you know, do they have any pre-existing medical history? Do they have a cardiac issue, a hypertensive history, issue? Are they diabetic? Okay, things like that. Okay, inquire to recent history. They've been, have they been ill lately? Okay, um, have they had any type of maybe respiratory infection, things like that? And again, you talk about recent, recent colds, flus, visits to the doctors, hospitalizations, all that type of stuff, okay? And you want to ask them other questions as well. Think about things like, do they have any stress going on, okay? Is it new stress? Is it unusual for them, okay? Have to ask them if they have any substance abuse, okay? Think about those young patients that might be doing cocaine or something, and, you know, that could very well be why they're having the chest pain as well. And do they have any change in their medications? You know, if they are, do have a cardiac history or hypertensive history, ask them if they're having any change in their medications. Have they stopped taking the medication? Have they adjusted their dosage of the medication on their own? All good questions to ask when you're taking the history to lead you on the path of what might be going on. Now, the other thing you can think about as well is the some differentials, right? Now, these aren't all of them, guys. Okay, again, this is a quick Monday Minute. It's just meant to kind of, kind of elicit your thought process and to get you thinking on what might be going on with your patients, okay? Um, and again, I'm not talking about doing things here when it comes to history as far as 12 leads and uh, finger sticks and, you know, right-sided 12 lead and all, what their blood pressure is and all that good stuff. All that, of course, is clinical evaluation. It's clues for you to lead you on the path of what might be going on with the patient. But when it comes to just specifically asking questions and the patient's responses, these are some of the things you could think of as well, okay? You know, it could be muscular, the pain could be musculoskeletal in nature, right? You know, is it provoked, does it increase with movement? Um, if you touch the area, okay, does it reproduce the pain when you touch with it, telling you where it's hurting? Um, think about things like maybe an, uh, you know, an aneurysm, okay, does the pain, do they describe it as a ripping or a tearing type of a pain? Does it be stabbing? Does it like a stabbing sort of pain? Um, you know, all these types of things that you can try to kind of narrow down what might be going on. And think about that pulmonary embolism as well, okay? Uh, again, coughing up that blood. All right, is the pain more pleuritic in nature? Is it deep or crushing? Okay, all these types of things but, that you can be thinking about. But keep in mind that a lot of these complaints can be vague, right? And it can also be leading to more of a cardiac 
sort of an issue because this is this is why we ask all the questions leading up to thinking about what our differential uh, could be for this type of a patient as well. So this is just sort of a, a, an overview, guys, okay? But I, I, what I'm hoping to get you on a path with on these is to think about more than just uh, ABCs and being sort of this uh, kind of machine where you're going through the same thing on every patient and asking questions that might not be necessarily specific or a applicable to what the patient's complaint is. Yes, you want to do your your basic assessment. You don't want to miss anything that might be vital, but when you start asking questions that are based on a patient's complaint or based on a patient's uh, presentation, you know, this is the type of thing that you can do, okay, and hopefully this will get you on, a tra on track for that. Now, of course, there might be some questions you're asking that aren't listed here, okay? Maybe you have your own style of how to approach a patient with chest pain, which is great, and that's a cool way to do things, okay? I'm not saying change what you're doing. I'm hoping that this is the type of thing that might give you sort of, of a kind of a mental flow chart when you're, you approach a patient with chest pain complaint and how to sort of narrow down what might be going on because chest pain can be a, a wide range of issues that might be, calling it like, might be causing it, like I mentioned earlier, right? It's just sort of one thing on a, a, a more grander scale of what might be going on, right? So by trying to do a history, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to sort of narrow your window of, of what you think might be going on with the patient, get it nice and narrow so that you can treat and transport and do appropriate interventions for your patient. Let's go back over to the, uh, the, the slide and I wanna just talk about one other thing before we go. Okay, so like I said, you know, history can be, you know, specific to a chest pain call and it, taking the proper information and gathering the proper history along with your clinical assessment, along with your diagnostic tools, along with your patient uh, assessment and your, even what the patient is looking, looking like to you visually can all help you and lead you on the right path again to your proper treatment and proper transport to the right hospitals, okay, for that patient, okay. So, you know, guys, EMS is a, is a, is a, uh, uh, a big, um, you know, knowledge building sort of uh, career if you ask me, okay. It's what we learn in, in school uh, is just sort of scratching the surface of what we need to learn and what we need to know to best treat our patients, okay. So, uh, while, you know, the ABCs and all are great and it's a good starting point, to me, you got to really start focusing in and vectoring down to what your patient's uh, complaints are so that you can treat them more efficiently, quickly, okay, and get them to the right facilities that where they need to be going for whatever their complaint might be, okay? So I hope that you can use these Monday minutes, guys. You know, again, uh, if you have a specific uh, method of, of uh checking your patient's uh, uh, chest pain complaint, by all means, go ahead and use that. Again, I'm hoping that these little Monday minutes here on patient history taking is going to give you sort of, a, again, that mental flow chart on what to ask patients when you encounter them and they have a specific complaint. I'm um, going to do a few more of these um, and hopefully, you know, get, give you an idea of what I'm trying to get at with these sort of presentations and, and these sort of mental uh, flow charts when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, patient assessment and, and history gathering, okay? Uh, now, like I mentioned before, guys, that flow chart is part of a larger um, uh, uh, guide over at Terramedic.com, at Terramedic On Demand, along with a lot of other guides there. If you like that type of thing, you think that sort of a guide is going to help you um, in your patient assessment, in your, your, your history gathering, in your clinical assessment and, and knowledge building and becoming a better uh, paramedic and EMS professional, go check out TurboMedic. It's at TurboMedic.com. You can click the graphic here in the video and go get details on TurboMedic and maybe I'll see you over in the members area. There's a free level and a premium level. Um, join the level you're most comfortable with. Uh, you know, Either way, you're going to get some great information whether you're free or premium. Okay, so I hope to see you over in the members area, guys, okay, even in the Facebook group uh, as well, okay, in the private Facebook group once you join. Okay, so that's it for me, guys. I know it's a little bit longer than usual um, Monday minutes today, uh, but again, I hope 
you can get something out of it. And I hope that this is going to start giving you sort of that mental flow chart when it comes to specific complaints that patients have. Guys, until next week, as always, this is Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours. If you have any uh, Monday minutes of your own, be sure to send them over to me. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. Until next week, as always, stay safe.